Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nady, and today we're doing a full face of makeup from Indie Brands. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh my little blackberry cupcakes, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you're having a great day so far. I am doing fabulous. I opened up my blinds this morning and there is the biggest fucking moth just stuck to my window. It's so cool looking, I love it. I can't tell if it's dead or not. If it is though, I'm definitely creating a little memorial behind me for it in a glass dome. It's like that silence of the lamb's moth. But otherwise, it is just a spectacular day. I can't wait to go play outside. But first, I can't wait to play with makeup. So these brands that we're gonna try, they might not necessarily be new products, like we may have tested them on this channel before, but I always love showcasing independent brands and shouting them out. Like, indie brands rule the world, in my opinion. At least quality-wise, sometimes. I have gotten some indie brand palettes that are just like straight from AliExpress with their names stamped on it. That, not so much, but when you come across a good-ass indie brand, honey, I am fucking with them for life. If you are an indie brand or you know of an indie brand that I, too, have to know about or you want to spread the word in our little community, please comment it down below. Being an indie brand myself, which is currently on hold, I totally recognize the importance of word of mouth, so spread those names like ass cheeks at a strip club. Anyways, let's just hop right into this because we do have a lot of products that we could use. I just popped out of the shower, so I'm all clean. I need to moisturize, and for that, I'm going in with my all-time favorite natural skincare brand that is KPS Essentials. This is so fucking good. Everything from them, it's actually professional grade. It was made by a chemist or a physicist. Uh, what was he? The owners and creators of this used to live by me when I lived in Michigan. I befriended them. They are the sweetest people ever. And that's when I was introduced to this. This is natural luxury. It is expensive, but you're paying for really good quality. And it's actually healing. You're not just adding moisture or whatever to your skin. <laughs> Fuck is that hissing coming from? Is that bug expanding into like a dinosaur or something? Anyways, this is like a hidden gem. Celebrities use it. It is just marvelous. And they also do facials. It's just so good. Anyways, we are gonna go in with their Renew Cream. I do also wanna say none of this is sponsored. Nobody paid me to use anything. A lot of these items over the years were sent to me. What is that noise? Oh no! That noise actually was that bug. I don't know if it was fluttering its wings or like doing a mating call, but it was just flipping the fuck out and then it flew away. It was like a seagull taking off. Anyways, nobody paid me to use any of this. A lot of things were sent to me, which I'm so grateful for. But whenever anybody sends me anything, they have to know that I will be totally honest with it. So yeah, if we like it, we like it. If we don't, we don't. Next, we are going in with a product that I have used multiple times on this channel, and I am so damn proud of this brand. Like, Sharon has blown her brand, Uma Butete, all the hell up in the best way possible. I have been with them almost from the beginning. They reached out to me years ago to review their product, and I have been in love since and the magnitude of growth has just been like mind-blowing. They started with the foundation and I think it originally retailed for like $40 and I don't think people were quite fucking with that and so when they went to Walmart they created an $8 version which is just as beautiful. So I really appreciate the fact that they cater towards their audience like they listen to what people want and they made it. And they distinguish the shade and the tone and everything by the caps. I will admit I haven't fucked super hard with their concealers because they just haven't looked that great on me. At least they didn't used to, but I haven't tried it in several years and my skin is really transformed. So I'm curious to see how this works today, but at least their foundation, oh my God, orgasmic. Whether or not you get their more expensive version or their more affordable version, it is like professional grade. This is Fair Lady T3 and this is the Flawless IRL Perfector de Taint. Oh wait, maybe that's the French words. I don't know, I saw taint and my ears perked. But they have like six or so different variations of this and they all have different formulas catering towards different skin types and skin tones. Oh, hi, you know, maybe this will work. I don't have a backup, so it's going to. I have had it for a few years, but I keep everything in like a super dark, very cold place. And no, it's not my soul. But even though this isn't about the people behind the brands, there are just certain people and brands that you want to root for. And this is absolutely one of them. I've not worked with them for several years, but I still wholeheartedly support them. This was actually one of my first ever sponsorships years ago, and they actually paid me. I was not used to that. I didn't know you could get paid for that shit but they paid me what they thought I was worth, which was way more than what I thought I was worth. And to have a brand that believes in you and supports you and actually seeks you out, that inspired me to continue doing YouTube. So really this brand means a ton to me. Of course I don't suck dick, like I don't love everything from them. And they know that I've been pretty vocal, but it really goes to show that the smallest act of kindness and support can change somebody's life forever. Like, sorry to get on a fucking tangent, but because of brands like this and support from y'all, this is why I'm able to call this my job. I was able to quit doing 
doing what I fucking hated and now I'm able to do what I love? Anyways, I've not used this foundation honestly in years and it is just as beautiful as I remember it. I thought maybe at first I applied way too much, but the more that I buffed it out and kind of tapped it in, it spread around and now it looks great. Oh fuck, I'm sweaty though. Damn. Hopefully this doesn't melt off. Now let's go in with our concealer. We'll see if I like this or not. And I don't know which shade to go in with. One of them looks hella gray and the other one just looks really peachy and red. And I can't tell if this is actually darker than my foundation. Ooh, well, hmm. The more reddish one is T3. Let's just put a little bit right there. Oh, I think that's gonna be too deep. But I also think the other one might be a little bit too light. So let's mix them. If I remember correctly, this has like the shape tape kind of coverage, but just blends out a little bit better. So if it's too much, I'm sorry. Let's see how she rolls on the eyeballs. You know what? Actually, that is kind of pretty. Like for a second, it did kind of look cakey, but the more that I spread it out, the more natural it's looking. It really does look pretty. Hopefully it stays looking like this. It already looks a million times better than how it used to look on my skin. And truthfully, I have like KPS to thank for that and the ordinary skin peel. But damn, I am not mad at that at all. The coverage is very much there. How it is, I'm not mad at that, sister. I'm not gonna powder my entire face, but I do need a little bit right under there. Otherwise, I'm gonna look like a piece of crinkled up paper. So I'm gonna dip into this Dominique Cosmetics Translucent Powder. I don't think I've even used this. If I remember correctly, we have tried a few products from them, specifically a pink palette, I think. And I believe I remember really liking it. Oh, satisfying, but also scary. It's like anal. Normally I go in with a makeup poof, but I want to be really specific in where I apply this because we do have other products to apply before I powder the rest of my face. Ooh, that's really pretty. It's nice and soft and blurring, but it doesn't add cakiness. Get it, queen. Oh, goddamn. See, this is what I don't love about the loose powders. They're so messy. I prefer a pressed powder just because it's a little bit more manageable, but the actual product itself so far seems lovely. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I breathed it in. Ugh, that's why I like the pressed stuff. I don't think that concealer has ever looked as gorgeous. So far, at least under my eyes, that is a beautiful mixture. The Uma Butete concealer is probably my most shit on product from them. And so the fact that we're kind of able to now make it work makes me really happy. But I'm gonna keep any powder under there because I am a little bit warm. I turned my air conditioner down. I don't know what the fuck is wrong, but we've been having this problem lately. Maybe it's my early menopause talking. I don't know. But Let's continue. So for Contour, this is a brand that I talk about all the time on here. This is Kaleidos. They have magnificent quality products. Their eyeshadows are among my favorite formula ever, like on par with Pat McGrath, like Natasha, Patrick Ta, like they are beautiful and they are quite a bit more affordable. But if you ever get to try their stuff, please do. It is divine. They're just such a cool and ingenious and really colorful brand. And I love seeing everything from their artwork to their actual products. Their lip clays are out of this world. I just have yet to find a product from them that I don't love. But this is their contour trio. I'm using the one medium, which I probably should use their light one, but I don't know where the fuck I put it. Well, I'll be a sour shit stick. I don't know. But we will make this work. So I'm just gonna take their middle shade right here and plop it right on the cheekbone. This might end up being perfection. Oh, she is a little bit dark. It's fine. Damn, doesn't that look like a good cheekbone? I'm like Maleficent. I don't think this will be too terribly off though. Like we will make this work. I'm fine with that. Or am I? Mm. It looks a lot more dramatic on camera than it does in person. But we have a few products that we're going to be using from them today. They have divine multi-chromes. And it's not just like eyeshadows. They have multi-chrome highlighters, multi-chrome eyeliners. They're unique and they're spectacular. And I think this might be a Korean brand. I'm not positive. I think we even may have worked together at some point. Did we? They do send me their things every now and again. And I can't remember if at one time we did do a sponsorship. I just feel like I should always disclose that at one point we may have worked together and I think we did. I don't know, but regardless, their shit is divine. Holy hell, it feels like I'm standing over a pot of boiling water. I just don't get it. What the hell? Oh my gosh, I'm like sweating so my foundation is coming off with my contour. I'm so sorry. Should I start stripping? I don't know. Oh, damn. My hair's gonna start curling back up. Next to help warm a hoe up, we are going to go in with CXC Beauty. They are actually locals here in Orlando, and we're gonna go in with their Defined Radiance Bronzer. This is the shade 
grade 01. So let's just plop that right there. Oh, that's pretty. A lot of times I do tend to go probably way too deep with my bronzer. I just love looking warm and sunny and glowy. And if somebody doesn't mistake me for just getting slapped, then I'm not happy. This is probably the shade that I should be using. And that's really nice. It's not overly pigmented. It's just adding a nice bit of warmth. It's definitely very matte. It doesn't have any glowiness to it, which does kind of confuse me because this is defined radiance. And usually when I think of radiance, I think of glitter and shimmer. Who the fuck cares about the name? The product itself is spectacular. But I do kind of wonder if there's a shade before this because if this is their first shade, fair people might not be able to get away with using this. Maybe they would. I don't know. Either way, what do we think? Yes? No? I don't think I look muddy yet, so that's a good sign. I am gonna wait for bluish bluish because I'm not sure what we'll do with the eyes, so let's move on to that. But first, let's powder because we will melt. I can already feel this creeping towards my testes. So before she goes any further, let's just tap a little of this on. I think everything looks very nice so far. I will say I do kind of prefer a cream contour. I'm not sure if Kaleidos has that, but in a perfect world, I would go in with like a cream contour and then maybe set it with the Kaleidos one. Not that there's anything wrong with this. I just feel like I'm able to be a little bit more precise with the cream, which be real. When would I ever say no to a little cream on my face? Damn, that feels so so much better. This piece of hair just keeps sticking out. Here, should I leave it like that? Just one little curl. Go back in there, you little bastard. Shit, it's like alfalfa. All right, darlings. So here is how we are looking. That powder was magnificent. It instantly soaked up everything, but it didn't leave like a cakey residue behind. That concealer looks gorgeous. I like how kind of minimal the foundation ended up being. Like I thought it was gonna be way too much, but once we spread it around, it still looks like my skin. You can still see a few of the flaws, which I like. But I think I've also used that foundation for drag look, so you can absolutely build it up to be like full glam high coverage. Oh my gosh, I'm sweaty. Damn, fuck. And now on to eyes, which of course I'm sure y'all already guessed. I'm going in with my Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas, another fave indie brand. This by far is my absolute favorite. I use it every time I do makeup. I keep like 10 jars of this in stock. You know me, I put the whore in hoarder. But it really is a phenomenal product, whether you're cutting your crease or just using it as an eye primer. I'm sure you could probably use it as a concealer too. They have I don't know, like five or six different shades of it for multiple skin tones. It is just a beautiful, beautiful product. The fabulous woman behind it, which of course this isn't about the people behind it, but she has really had my back and has always offered to help me with my own brand. So I just appreciate people going above and beyond and actually being a friend. But once again, this brand knows that I do not suck any dick or titty on here. Like I will not blow smoke up your ass and recommend a product just because I like somebody behind it. Like, sorry to rant, but I do not understand when brands only want you to be like super nice about their shit. Otherwise they just write you off. That's not being a good brain. That's being a dictator. For eyeshadow, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do, but I do wanna dip into this Pariah House Cosmetics palette. They were kind enough to send me this and I have wanted to dive into her for ages. I'm really attracted to this gorgeous kind of bluish shade. It's a duochrome. I think it goes from like purple to blue, but there are no mattes in this palette. So we have to dive into other ones. So of course we have to go in with one of my all time favorite indie brands, Blend Bunny. Oh, Oh, yet another brand that I have so enjoyed watching blow up. Oh my gosh. They are popping fabulous palettes out left and right and each palette is magnifique. The quality is absolutely there and not every shadow in every palette is gonna be like a 10 out of 10 winner. They might be like an eight and a half or a nine, but like nine out of 10 shadows are a 10. That's a lot of numbers, I'm sorry. And unless we're talking about inches, really, who the fuck cares? But the poppin' shades in here are definitely made more for artistry. It's not something that you slap on and like blend out like you could but I don't think that's where you get the best quality. These palettes are more for like little tiny brush use and being very, very specific. So I think that's what we're gonna do today. Hopefully we create a fuckable look, but I haven't done a cut crease in a long ass time and I just want something super colorful. I think right on the inner corner, I wanna take this beautiful kind of minty green. It's called Inside Joke. Sounds like me, honey. I am the joke. I'm just gonna plop her right on the inner bit and I'm just setting it there. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, that's nice. Kind of like a sea foamy green. Green. And then right next to that, let's go in with 32. Start tapping that right next to the green. We are gonna cut this so it doesn't have to be the cleanest looking thing ever right now. Next, I wanna take this lovely purple called Signs. And I'm just gonna keep going down the line till we hit basically my ears. No, not really, but I do want a nice long wing. But we'll take that and plop it right next to what I just laid down. And I'm bringing it more on my eye socket because I do wanna blend that out with a really pretty lavender next to this. Most of this I'm gonna cover up anyways. What a waste. But really though, if you want to experiment with any kind of color, these are the palettes that you want. Just from the way that they're set up, from the actual quality, like you can do millions
millions and millions of different combinations, the possibilities are limitless. Next, we'll take some giggle and we will blend that out. I don't want things to start getting muddy. When it comes to color, honey, you can always add more, but you can never take it away. So go slow. It's like penetration. Gotta ease into this shit. And I love that you can still see the green, but you can still see the purple and they just like blend into each other flawlessly. Let's go into change this fabulous blue here. And I'm gonna pop that right on the outer corner. Now blend that out with a little bit of dream. My goodness, we're gonna use every fucking color in this palette by the end of the video. We'll lightly fluff that just over what we laid. And finally, just to deepen shit up, we'll go in with this darkest blue right there. I'm going to press it right into the eye socket just like that. Oh yeah. Okay, let's cut a hoe, shall we? Probably should have gone in with the Gerard Cosmetics white clean canvas. I don't know why I didn't. So my bad, yo, I'm sorry. Okay, darling, here we go. I did kind of take it a little bit too far on this side, so we'll deepen up that outer corner after we apply a little bit of shim shim. Let's dip into this beauty right here. Oh gosh, that is just spectacular. Spectacular! Oh, fuck yes. I am gonna try to leave a little bit of that cut that I made so that you can tell the difference between the shimmer and the mattes. I also love that there's been no fallout underneath my eyes with anything, like yay for that. And then right where I didn't put that shimmer, I'm going into their Surge palette and dipping into Shocked. And we're just plopping it right there to make a nice little separation between all the colors. For the lower lash, I'm gonna start by going in with these Kaleidos Multi-Chrome Liners. I have not tried these yet, and I'm taking this little lady right here. Ooh, shit. It's really pretty, but it's also pink, so it just looks like my skin. Let's try one of these more bluey ones. Ooh, yes, serving you gay alien realness. And then we'll dip back into the Surge palette. I'm gonna go into this beautiful kind of fuchsia, and we can just blend this all along the lower lash line. And then all up in between them lashes, we'll take some Stay. It's kind of like a grapey barney purple. For a little inner corner highlight, we're gonna dip into this Kaleidos Moon Cruiser highlighter. You can't see it, but it shifts so many different ways. Maybe once it's all over my eyeball, you'll see it. But we'll plop her right on the inner corner, just about there. Yes, anything? Oh, damn. Sometimes these multi-chromes are so damn finicky, you need perfect lighting to be able to truly see them. But I am probably gonna use this as an actual highlighter on my face, and I guarantee you, you, you will see it then. For mascara, we're gonna take What's Up Beauty, Watch Me. This brand has luxurious, beautiful, professional brushes, amazing makeup, and stellar nail polish. So damn good. And then for lashes, we're gonna go in with these model rock lashes. All right, the eye look is done and somehow I've managed to fuck up this eyelash. We'll just ignore that, okay? For lippy dippies, we're gonna go in with some Gerard Cosmetics liner. This is in the shade Melrose Place. Oh, uh, so creamy. And then we'll take their lipstick in the shade Rodeo Drive. Oh, that's nice. I haven't used this yet. Mm -hmm. And then to add a little bit more depth to the outer edges, I'm going in with Red Brick Road. And lastly, we have our highlighter that we put on the inner corner. Let's plop it on the cheek. Ready for this goodness? Oh. <laughs> okay, I went in with way too freaking much. Holy shit. Oh, damn. Did that just ruin everything? Well, it's an interesting look. It's just giving kind of festival vibes, but that's all right. Oh, my. Gosh. Woof. Okay, now to truly finish up, we are gonna go in with a little blush. This is the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Palette. And I'm just gonna take these two little queens right here, and we could just tap her along the edges of our face. Oh my gosh, that actually goes perfectly with that highlighter. Oh, it's bringing out like the beautiful fuchsia. Oh yes, good call. And there we go, a nice little colorful look. We used so many products, and I don't think I really have any complaints about any of it. Now that it's set into place and my oils have kind of combined with the products, everything has smooshed together marvelously. The foundation looks great, that concealer looks divine, my skin just looks flawless, and it has a little bit of a dewy glow. The eyeshadow, I love it. Did I have to go in with that many shadows? No, but also remember who we're dealing with. If I could use 10 palettes at once, honey, I would. I was a little bit worried about that highlighter with that shift, but once I put that blush over it, oh my god, fuck a ball. So lovely. I have no complaints about anything. If my eyeballs look glassy, it's because I definitely poke them a little bit too hard with that liner, but it was my own fault. I was like stabbing. It's been a while since I've had my face stabbed with anything, so she was excited. But I am totally in love with everything that we use today. Like, this is why I really like indie brands. Just where the hell it's at. So, my loves, there we go. Thank you so much for being here.
here. I love having you. Thank you to all of these brands for letting me support you and for supporting me. And please comment down below any brands that you would love to see featured. But otherwise, babies, have a wonderful, beautiful day and stay safe. Do you know what? If you want just a little bit more me in your life, head over to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplex. You get videos a day early. You get Patreon-only content. You get a Patreon-only store. And best part, it's cheap, fun, and fancy, just like me. And don't forget my latest Repop collection is available at repopcosmetics.com. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady. And you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye!